quite often we talk about the Australian adoption narrative as maybe being a little bit slow. But actually, if you look at how individuals in Australia are using AI, we are world leading. And I think that's an interesting dynamic when you, when you compare that businesses from the top down implementing AI strategy, we might be a little bit slower, but our people, our people are world leading in AI adoption. You might have even seen the news just yesterday that said Australia is the most AI addicted country in the world. Um, it's actually the curiosity of our people that is driving this curiosity, innovation, and attempting new use cases. And I think that's an opportunity for all of us, leaders across our organizations, to work out how to tap into this passion and innovation that is coming in from the individuals into our organization. As much as jobs are going to go away, there will be some, mm. but hopefully it will be better jobs. And we do have a view where better jobs and more jobs. I mean, if you look historically at new innovations and new technology, I mean, just look at the internet, right? Um, we have more employment today than we've ever had. Mm. So uh, we are not seeing a future where everybody's sitting home playing, you know, watching TikTok videos while AI is doing all the work. That's not the future we see in IBM. We see a future where lives get better. The biggest and most important part of Telstra, that was where you prioritized AI up front. Mm. And I think that's critical because it's hard work. When you deploy something, then you'll have a lot of iteration before you get the real value of it. And I think that's where a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, companies, they actually underestimate the hard work needed. Then you need to ensure you simplify, you have the right governance in place, and then you have a value framework to prioritize where you put the scarce resources. That is critical for, for companies, and that's the same for us. One of the biggest challenge when we started this work last year uh, was there was no standardized or well widely adopted framework for explaining and understanding the nature of the problem of AI safety. Basically, when we engage or discuss with different organizations in different countries, people tend to use the same term to mean different things. And, and, and therefore, the, the, there are lots of communication hurdles and misunderstanding. So recognizing this issue, so one of the efforts we try to do is uh, we did a survey of all the AI safety or responsible AI work in the past from different countries and try to understand the philosophy behind the framework, behind the model, and it would come, try to come up with a unified model that can explain the work and also with the, with the objective of standardizing the, the, the terminology, or we call this the taxonomy of AI safety. So if you think of privacy, safety, and security as a three-leg stool, we understand that if one leg of the stool is underdeveloped or underinvested in, the stool falls over. And I can say that with 30 years of experience, safety has long been this poor, poor step cousin to the other disciplines. And, but we actually saw that change a little bit with the great AI drag race of 2023, when we finally <laughs> saw governments really galvanizing around the idea of AI safety. And this mostly focused on the longer term existential threats of AGI versus some of the more current and medium um, AI harms that we're actively seeing today. So I do think the greatest tension between large businesses will be managing the risks of their own internal operations and reputations and balancing that with the needs and risks of their enterprise customers versus the potential catastrophic harms to the consumer and the individual. I think it's actually a chance for our country to take advantage of its geography. And I look at this from an environmental science point of view in that we are responsible for about a third of the world's oceans. We're responsible for a huge chunk of Antarctica. We're responsible for a lot of the ethical conversations that are launched at the United Nations. We represent some of the most vulnerable people on the planet in terms of sea level rise and other climate change related issues. And so when you look at the applications of how AI can converge with other technologies, particularly in the environmental science space, I feel like there's something about Brand Australia in these global conversations that we really do own that niche. Wow, so we started off with Mo. We did some research that found that roughly 25% of companies are preparing to train their employees in generative AI uh, with mixed results. Um, but 
you know, workers are really being proactive in upskilling on AI. So just anecdotally, um, what we found over the last year on certain LinkedIn learning courses that were designed to increase the AI aptitude was we found a spike of 160% uptake. So what it's, and it's saying across the board or correct. for specific size companies? No, this is for non-technical professionals non -technical too. Profession. Something I heard right at the start of the day was around the opportunity for the country and economy all up and really the need for strong collaboration across sectors, across the ecosystem. Then I also heard some very specific discussions and I heard multiple times the mention of getting the infrastructure right. I think this is a conversation to go into deeper. Um, I think it's also connected to our own capability and um, AI industry that is developed um, and also surrounding yourself with, with expertise. I was then really intrigued to find out just how pronounced the generational factor is in this AI wave. And, and hearing even one of the panelists say that those who are leading organizations now are almost not in the right age group to make the decisions and have the insights of how AI could be used. I thought that was very provocative. Um, I also think it's a call to action for everyone leading to get into AI and learn more about it so you can lead your organization through that. Um, I also heard several times the need to break the silo. So that we're not just talking about AI, we're talking about AI for energy transition. We're talking about AI and robotics, AI and quantum, AI and space. So really recognizing just the far reach and impact um, and connection that AI can have.